It happens you come to the theater, watch the show, but there's nothing to watch. Boring, or even worse, an actor, as we say, overacts, yells, twitches, toils, but he's empty inside, and the audience even feels sorry for him. Oh dear, why on earth does it take you such great pains? Have a rest. And sometimes the actor seems to be simply voicing words, but the audience in the hall is crying. What's the secret? How does it happen? The answer was given by Konstantin Stanislavski more than 80 years ago. He invented the method not for geniuses, but to ensure that any actor could act laudably. Actors have to know it, but the basics of the Stanislavski method can be helpful for anyone performing in public. After all, it is the method that can make the speaker a charismatic one, which is a buzzword nowadays. The Stanislavski method acting is complex, but there are only three core principles. Super objective, stage action, suspension of disbelief. Stanislavski himself called them so. The super objective. The super objective is the actor's goal. You cannot just voice a text. You always have to understand why you're doing it. What are you pursuing? What do you want? For a non-actor, this principle can be enunciated as follows. What is my audience expected to do after my performance? That's it. What they are expected to do. You can object. No, I only have to voice it, and that's all. That only to voice it is the first step towards a boring performance. Start your training with writing the answer to the question, what are they expected to do after my performance? And it will be the first step of the method. The second, stage action. Having a goal does not make an actor interesting. It is a struggle for that goal that makes him interesting. And for a struggle, he needs obstacles. Thus, an action according to the method is not a physical movement, it is the struggle. What does this mean for a non-actor? We wrote the goal. Now, ask yourself this question. Why they don't do that? Well, for example, I want everyone to do physical exercises, but do not jump to a conclusion of their benefits. I think about why don't they do it? Maybe it's laziness. That's it. Then we'll fight laziness and we'll speak exactly about it. A heartfelt struggle is always interesting. Voice objections yourself. And parry. Criticize your own position. And defend it. Ask yourself sharp questions and answer them. It will lug you away. Will make you an interesting and charismatic character. Are you afraid of looking laughable? Don't be. The third principle was designed for that. Suspension of disbelief. This is what gives an actor sincerity. The mechanism is the following. The actor voicing Shakespeare's text forms in thought his personal story that touches him emotionally. Well, for example, in real life, my girlfriend dumped me. Fine, I'll think about it. It's very important to visualize this situation as accurately as possible. If you believe it, your audience will do it too. And if we're not actors, it's hard to think of one thing and say another, isn't it? That is not even necessary, and you don't have to. Follow a simple rule. Less common words, more stories that you can visualize, that is, with a description of events. Touch you personally, help you get things done, see your story, and speak it out. And if I don't have a story, just look around attentively. So, the Stanislavski method acting for speaker is to set a goal as, what will they do? To think out all the obstacles that could jeopardize the goal. Name them and fight them. Use fewer generalizations, bring more specific stories. The method originates from Russia, and now it is the entire world's heritage. It is worshipped by actors and elucidates not only the mystery of good acting, but also the secret of perfect public appearances. Good luck, and I wish you excellent performances.